Hey everybody, this is Cody with Red Sky Pictures, and today we're going to do a uh, small tutorial in DaVinci Resolve. What we'll be doing is creating a timeline, putting some uh, Red One files in there, and uh, adjusting the metadata of the Red One files before our color correction begins. So I'm going to jump to the Red tab here in the source settings, and I'm going to set my decode quality to quarter res good because I know on my current system specs, in this version of Resolve, I can get real time playback at that. Um, I'm going to leave timecode how it is, and right here, de decode clips using setting. If you uh, go to project here, you can manually enter in all your decoder setting uh, information here, and every clip you bring into your timelines will be brought in using these settings. Uh, I typically like to use project because I switch my gamma curve to red log film. That's usually how I begin grading for most things, especially with the red one. Um, you don't want to do red default. I don't think it ever really works very well. Um, camera metadata uh, can work, uh, especially if you sh uh, if everything was shot on the Epic. A lot of times the cinematographer will have set everything up the correct way, and that's actually the best way to do it. For a red one project, like the one we're going to be working on today, I'm going to go to project because I don't want to use red gamma one, which is all what all the red one f uh, files are automatically set to out of the camera. So I'm going to switch this to red log film. Uh, red color three is the newest color science. I'll leave that there. And for this particular project, I'm going to keep 3600 here because everything was shot indoors for the most part. Uh, my green channel, I'll bring that down. The red one tends to be a little hot in the green channel. Um, and for this particular one, I want it to have a cooler look, so I'm gonna give this like that and get rid of a little bit of the red. So that's pretty good. Um, you know, We'll fine tune things as we get into it, so we'll set that. We'll go to our browse panel here. Go to our root folder and over here, is our media storage which can actually be set up in the preferences here you want to add uh, wherever your media is in this case it's going to be our internal raid um, so once you add a f uh, folder or drive you're gonna have to restart resolve um, to make it take action so once it's here I'm gonna navigate to the project folder I want to be in uh, right here and so I'm gonna right click and go add folder and subfolders in the media pool and that's gonna add every single um, media file that Resolve uh, can handle into whichever folder is selected over here. So I'm just going to put it in the root folder. I'm going to add folder and subfolders. And it's going to just scan through all those folders and find all the media and put it in my media pool. All right, there we go. I'm going to go ahead and jump. Actually, before I jump to anything else, since this project was shot anamorphic, you can see everything squeezed. So what I'm going to do is Command A, right click and I'm going to change pixel aspect ratio, switch it to CinemaScope, and that should get us the, uh, the two to one de-squeeze. We'll jump over to our conform page, click new, empty session, because if you don't click empty session, it'll add all of your clips in the media pool on your timeline, which we don't want. We want to build a custom one here, so um, start time code's fine where it is. And once that's there, I can click on a file in the media pool and you can see how it's de-squeezed here. And you can navigate to the portion you want. Um, this isn't the footage I want necessarily, so let's go down. All right, so we're going to more on work on some of this stuff here. I'll set my endpoint scrub to where I want to edit out, and I can bring it in. And I can just keep doing that and adding clips however I want. But I actually already have a session built with the three clips I want to work on. Um, it's a wide, a medium, and we have this outdoor shot here. So first things first, I'm going to go to my color page here to begin working. And right off the bat, um, I'm going to use my control panel to do these adjustments, but you can also do them down here in the primary. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my input sizing. And the edges of the image over here are that there's a little bit of black around the edges and a little strange um, occurrence going on there. So I'm actually just going to zoom in. And don't worry right now about the uh, widescreen mat. We can always adjust that at the end and apply a, a global mat to everything. Uh, I'm going to do the same to the second shot here. Punch that guy in there. And this one here actually came in like this because it was uh, underslung on a steady cam. So 
what I'm going to do on this one is instead of trying to rotate it with the knob on my control panel, I'm just going to jump down here, do 180 degree rotation. It's perfect. We'll zoom it in, get rid of those weird edges. And we're good there. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our first metadata pass. And I'll show you a little bit about what the different settings here are. So if I right click and I go to edit red codec settings, and this only works obviously if you're using the R3D files. So here you can see if I go to red default, it's just going to debayer it completely wrong. Um, these are the default settings over here, the ISO 3200. This I believe was shot yeah, right here. It says what, it, what the camera settings in camera were. So it was shot at ISO 1280. So that's definitely not going to work. Um, camera metadata, it's far too crunchy for my liking for a starting point. I might bring it somewhere similar to this, but I don't want to start with this because you can already see I, I'm losing details in the highlights and um, that's just not what I want. So I'm going to go project is the settings I've already set up. But I'm actually going to just jump into clip so I can manually adjust a little bit more. Um, and for this, everything actually looks pretty good. I might just bring up my contrast just a little bit and that's good there apply changes. I'm going to remove this now. So I'm going to right click, grab still. I'm going to jump over to my second one here. I'm going to go back into edit red codex settings and I'm just going to drop my green channel a little bit and we'll go that red and blue back. the contrast okay that's good and um, again this is just a metadata pass so I mean as long as it's close we can always fine-tune it in our actual uh, color grading in the nodes here the last one I'm going to jump to here and obviously this was shot outside so I'm going to switch my color temperature back to what it was in camera which was 5600 and I'm going to add a little bit of the red channel back in because I want this to be nice and warm. Get rid of the blue channel a bit. Get rid of some of this green. There we go. So that's how I want that one to start with. And actually, I want this to be really dark. I want it to be almost silhouetted. So um, I'm going to go back into it. I'm actually going to just bring down my ISO. Um, so it looks like it was shot in camera at 500. Um, which was good exposure, but just for creative purposes, we're going to bring it down and we're going to increase our contrast. It's pretty good there, maybe. All right, and um, basically what I like to try to do is just, you know, get a nice, get a nice uh, waveform over here in the RGB parade, um, or if I had the waveform, I actually use the waveform uh, on an external monitor, so I don't have the waveform monitor up here. Um, but, you know, I've got all the data there, so I don't really have to worry about anything. The color balance is pretty close to how I want it, so that's pretty good there. Apply changes. And um, that's basically how we're going to do our metadata pass, and now we're actually uh, ready to begin grading. So hopefully you enjoyed this uh, short tutorial on importing R3D files and getting your metadata set up. And in the next tutorial, we will be diving into actual color grading and adding nodes. So uh, make sure you like us on Facebook and subscribe to our channel on YouTube for more tutorials like this.